Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about high anion gap metabolic acidosis, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. We talked about beta 2 microglobulin, lactic acid, lactate dehydrogenase, anti acetylcholine receptor antibodies, and anti parietal cell antibodies. We even talked about serum osmolality before. Today, let's talk about urine osmolality, which depends on your fluid intake and can range anywhere between 50 and 1200 milliosmos per kilogram of water. Osmolality is measuring the number of osmoles. What is an osmol? It's the molarity caused by a mole. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. There are three fluids that you can measure their osmolality clinically. Blood osmolality, urine osmolality, and stool osmolality. Of course, you can measure the osmolality of any fluid, but these three are the ones that we care about in medicine. You send the sample to the lab. They dip an osmometer in it, which measures the number of osmotically active particles, the number of osmoles. And before you know it, you have your osmolality. And then there are five gaps that you need to know about. Serum anion gap, serum osmolar gap, urine anion gap, urine osmolar gap, and stool osmolar gap. We talked about serum osmolality before, so let's review. What tube do we use? Red top tube. No anticoagulant added, which means the blood will clot. The serum and the plasma will separate from the clotted blood. Serum will float on top. Take that serum, stick the osmometer in it to measure the number of osmoles. Two-thirds of your body is made of water. This is total body water. Most of it is in the intracellular fluid. Some of it is in the extracellular. The extracellular is divided between the blood and the interstitial fluid. Depending on which compartment is more osmotically active and has higher osmolality, water can go this way or this way. Water will go to the more concentrated compartment. So if inside your cell has more osmoles, water will flow this way. If outside in the blood has more, water will flow this way. Make believe that this cell is in your brain. Oh, if my brain cell is swelling or shrinking, then I am in a bad shape. If my brain cell contains tons of sodium, water will flow to the cell and the cell will swell. But if the blood contains more sodium, hypernatremia, then the fluid will go to the blood away from my brain cell, the brain cell will shrink. That's why with sodium problems, you get CNS problems. Whether you have hyponatremia or hypernatremia, both of which are bad for the brain. Osmosis is passive diffusion of water. No energy needed, no carrier needed. It happens along the electrochemical gradient from high concentration of water to low concentration of water, which means from low concentration of the solute, like sodium, to the high concentration of the solute. The definition of osmosis and osmotic pressure was discussed in detail before in my physiology playlist. Osmolality measures the number of osmoles. What's an osmol? Mole, osmolality caused by a mole, osmosis caused by a mole. One mole of glucose will have just one glucose molecule, so this is one osmol. But look at Cl2. Oh, chlorine will give me Cl and Cl. That's two osmoles. So which one is better? From this perspective, chloride is better because it gave us two osmoles. Osmolality cares about the number of molecules, not the mass, not the size. I don't care that glucose is heavier. I don't care that glucose is sweeter. It does not matter. The only thing that matters to osmolality is the number of particles. What's the normal plasma osmolality? About 290. If you say 300, it's okay. Number of particles per volume. Volume. Number of particles, milliosmoles per volume. Quiz time. Which one of these vessels has the highest serum osmolality? Please pause. And the answer here is E is the correct answer. We care about the number of particles. This one and this one have the highest number of particles. So we're between D and E. Then the only difference is glucose versus calcium chloride. This will give me one osmol but this will give me three osmoles, one here and two here. So since osmolality cares about the number, E is the highest serum osmolality. What's the difference between osmolality and osmolarity? It's a technical difference that clinically doesn't matter at all. Osmolality is per kilogram, osmolarity is per liter. You can write liter this way or this way, the mnemonic still works. If you wanna be that technical about it, which one is more accurate? Osmolality. Which one is more practical? Osmolarity because it's easier for me to get a one liter sample or 100 ml sample from you than to get one kilogram. 
I gotta love my graduated cylinder. Clinically speaking, it doesn't matter that much because your blood is made of mostly water and your urine is made of mostly water and the density of water is one. So whether you measure it in a kilogram or one liter doesn't matter because one liter of water weighs one kilogram. Please never ever 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 confuse dehydration with volume depletion. Dehydration is when you lose pure water. Volume depletion is when you lose salt and water. What does this patient need? Water replacement, give the patient water. What does this patient need? Water and electrolytes. Big difference. If you want to understand the difference between osmolality and tonicity, please refer to my physiology playlist as well as my other playlist titled Fluids and Electrolytes. Quiz time. Here is X, Y, and Z for you. Can you calculate the osmolarity in each one? Let me know the answer in the comments. So your normal plasma osmolality is about 290, correct? Yeah. Therefore, if your plasma is more concentrated than this, we call it hyperosmotic or hypertonic. If it's less concentrated, we call it hypoosmotic or hypotonic. Now let's talk about ADH, antidiuretic hormone. It's a hormone that, well, the name has the answer, is antidiuretic, antidiuresis. It does not want diuresis. It does not want you to lose water in the urine. So ADH will help reabsorb all that water from the kidney and back to the blood. Why do we care about osmolality, tonicity, electrolytes, etc.? because they can affect your brain function. For example, hyponatremia or hypernatremia can affect my level of consciousness, can make me confused or delirious or somnolent or obtunded or stuporous or comatose. Next, what is urine osmolality? Same thing. Send the urine to the lab and they will dip an osmometer in it to measure all of the osmols and they will give you the result in milliosmols per liter if it's osmolarity or per kilogram if it's osmolality. But what's the urine osmolar gap? Well, it's just like any gap. The osmolar gap, you can do it for the serum or the urine, the concept is the same. It's osmolality measured by the stupid osmometer minus osmolality calculated by this brainy equation. It's the difference between what's measured and what was predicted via this equation. Tell me about the equation for calculated osmolality. If you're talking about serum calculated osmolality, two times sodium because this sodium is usually bound to chloride. So one for the sodium, one for the chloride. This is very osmotically active, by the way. Followed by glucose and blood urea nitrogen. And you have to adjust them just to make the math work. So BON is divided by 2.8, glucose is divided by 18. You do not need to know why 2.8 and why 18. But if you're doing the equation for the urine osmolality, since the urine has more stuff, and since there is more potassium in the urine relative to the serum, because remember, in the serum, sodium is 140. What's your potassium? Four. So potassium doesn't even show up. You can ignore it. No one will care. But in the urine, it does matter. So it does show up in the equation. One of the main functions of your kidney is to regulate potassium. Oh boy, and if you're taking a diuretic like loop diuretics or thiazide, you will have tons of potassium in the urine. So it's two times sodium plus potassium. And then BUN over 2.8, glucose over 18. So the only difference between this and this is whether potassium is there or no. So what's the measured serum osmolality? Let's say I measured it in the lab and it was 293. And then what's the calculated? Let's say I did 2 times 140 plus 15 over 3 plus 100 over 18. Let's just make it rough numbers. Let's say 290. So 293 minus 290 equals 3. Is this less than 10? Yes. So this gap is okay. It is normal. But since there is more gunk in your urine, because basically the function of your kidney is to get rid of all the waste, this urine osmolar gap is 80 to 100 milliosmos per kilogram of water. I know that a genius person in the comment section will comment on, hey, medicos, you said osmolarity, and you said per liter, this should be per kilogram. Doofus, clinically speaking, we don't care. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're able to diagnose and treat the patient. If you can do this, I'll be your friend. Not this metaphysical mumbo jumbo. What's the normal urine osmolality? Well, let's say 600. Okay, that's normal. How about serum osmolality? Let's say 300. 600 over 300 is 2. So yeah, that's between 1 and 3. So that's a good ratio. Why is the ratio so wide like this? Like it could be 1, it could be 1.5, 2, 2.5, or 3. Yeah, so the urine osmolality could equal the serum or could be three times more concentrated than the serum? Yeah, because urine osmolality depends on your fluid intake, which will determine the ADH level, which will determine how much water will we reabsorb or not reabsorb. 
Urine osmolality in a nutshell. What's the normal range? 50 to 1200 milliosmoles per kilogram of water. It depends on the fluid intake, so it matters. So you need to tell the lab what's the fasting or feeding state of the patient. Urine osmolality is more accurate than urine specific gravity in measuring their urine concentration. Why is that? Three reasons. Number one, osmolality occurs only about the number of osmoles, nothing else. Not the weight, not the mass, not the nature of the particle, etc. Urine specific gravity cares about the number and the nature of the particle. Next, urine osmolality does not require to be corrected, but urine specific gravity needs to be corrected for the temperature and for the presence of protein or glucose. Third, urine osmolality has a very wide range. 50 is not the same as 150, which is not the same as 550, which is not the same as 1150. It gives you more information but urine-specific gravity is a narrower range. To better understand and interpret urine osmolality, you will need to measure other things like serum osmolality, serum osmolar gap, electrolytes in the serum and the urine to help you diagnose your patient better. Urine osmolality could be increased in the following condition. Any condition that raises ADH, such as SIADH, paraneoplastic syndrome like small cell lung cancer, or even water deprivation. If I'm not drinking, ADH will go up. It will reabsorb all of that water back to the blood, leaving less water in the urine, which means the urine is becoming more concentrated. Conversely, anything that decreases ADH or ADH activity, such as diabetes insipidus, excessive water intake, will make me reabsorb less water, all of that water will end up in the urine, diluting the urine and lowering its concentration, i.e. lower osmolality. A good kidney is a kidney that is able to concentrate the urine. In pre-renal azotemia, such as shock or heart failure, the kidney per se is still healthy, capable of concentrating the urine. But what if the kidney failure is inside the kidney, such as acute tubular necrosis or severe pyelonephritis? then that's a bad kidney unable to concentrate the urine. Cirrhosis of the liver can increase plasma osmolality. Why is that? Because cirrhosis means the liver is toast. The liver, may he rest in peace, used to metabolize and degrade many particles. But now these particles will not be degraded. They will end up in the blood. They will pile up in the blood. Eventually, they will end up in the kidney which will mean they will end up in the urine, raising the urine concentration. A very important fact for any healthcare doofus is to understand that the first voided urine sample is usually the best. It's the most concentrated. It has whatever gunk you're trying to measure in the urine in abundance, which means more accurate results, less likely to give you false negatives. Another question for you, which perineoplastic syndromes, i.e. cancer diseases that secrete, cause syndrome of inappropriate ADH? Can you enumerate three? How about five diseases? How about seven cancers? All of these can lead to what? Increase ADH and therefore a higher urine osmolality. So please answer these questions in the comment section. Do you want to learn about HAGMA? NAGMA, acidosis, alkalosis, acidemia, alkalemia, base excess, base deficit, serum osmolar gap, serum anion gap, urine anion gap, stool osmolar gap, diabetic ketoacidosis, and much more, then download my acid base imbalance course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.